In March 2021, a single gust of wind and a moment of pilot error brought the entire global economy to its knees. The Ever Given got stuck in the Suez Canal. For six days, the artery of the world was severed. Factories in Europe stopped, oil prices spiked, and the world realized, with terrifying clarity, just how fragile our civilization really is. But for one country, this wasn't just a logistical headache. It was an existential nightmare. Israel. Look at the map. Israel appears to be connected to three continents, but geopolitically, it is an island. It is surrounded by land borders that are closed to trade. Its only lifeline to the world is the sea, and its only path to the east, to China, India, and Japan, is through the Suez Canal. The Suez is controlled by Egypt, and history has taught Israel a harsh lesson. A chokehold controlled by a neighbor is a weapon waiting to be used. In 1967, Egypt closed the canal to Israeli ships, triggering a war. Today, rising tolls and Houthi missile attacks in the Red Sea have turned this route into a gauntlet of fire and money. So, Israel has drafted a plan to break out of the trap. It is a plan so ambitious, so expensive, and so geologically insane that it sounds like science fiction. They don't just want to build a new port, they want to bring the ocean inland. They plan to dig a massive canal five miles deep into the Negev Desert. They want to excavate a port basin the size of a city in the middle of the sand. And they want to connect it all with a 350-kilometer steel spine of high-speed rail that will slash the country in half. This is the story of the Southern Gateway. It is a $20 billion gamble to build an artificial sea where no water has existed for millions of years. It is a project that pits engineers against geology, Israel against Egypt, and the economy against the environment. Today on Grand Structures, we are digging into the sand to answer the ultimate question. Is this the visionary future of the Middle East, or is it a $20 billion mirage? To understand why you would ever try to dig a port in a desert, you first have to look at the only alternative. This is Elat. It is Israel's southernmost city, sitting at the tip of the Gulf of Aqaba. It is Israel's only backdoor to the Red Sea. On paper, Elat should be a global trade hub. It sits at the crossroads of Africa and Asia, but in reality, it is a bottleneck. Elat is squeezed into a tiny strip of coastline, just seven miles wide, sandwiched between the mountains of Jordan to the east and the cliffs of Egypt to the west. The geography is brutal. The mountains drop almost vertically into the sea. There is no flat land to build a massive container terminal. The current port was built in the 1950s and can handle about 50,000 containers a year. Compare that to the port of Shanghai, which handles 40 million. Elot is a rowboat in a world of aircraft carriers. And then there is the conflict of interest. Elot isn't just a port city, it is Israel's vacation capital. It has pristine coral reefs, luxury hotels, and dolphins. The last thing the mayor or the tourists want is a massive, noisy, polluting megaport blocking the sunset. You cannot expand the port out into the sea without destroying the tourism industry that keeps the city alive. And the water depth is a problem. Modern megaships, the beasts that carry 24,000 containers, need deep, wide turning basins. A lot is simply too cramped, so shipping companies skip it. They go to Jordan's port of Aqaba next door, or they brave the Suez. So the Israeli government faced a choice. Abandon the dream of a Red Sea trade route, or do something radical. If you can't push the port out into the water, you have to pull the water into the land. Enter the Southern Gateway. This isn't just a construction project, it is a terraforming event. The plan calls for the construction of a massive inland port located 4.6 miles 7.5 kilometers north of the coastline, deep in the Arava Valley. The engineering required to do this is staggering. Let's break it down. Phase 1. The Canal 
To get ships from the sea to the desert, engineers need to dig a canal. But not just a ditch. This canal needs to be 70 meters, 230 feet wide, and 15 meters deep to accommodate ocean-going vessels. It would run parallel to the Jordanian border, cutting through rock, sand, and salt flats. Phase two, the basin. At the end of the canal, they would excavate a massive turning basin and docking area. We are talking about removing roughly 100 million tons of earth. To visualize that, imagine digging up the Great Pyramid of Giza 13 times. And you have to move all that rock somewhere without burying the city next door. But here is the killer engineering challenge, the water table. The Arava Valley is dry on the surface, but underground it has complex aquifers. Some are fresh, some are saline. If you just dump a billion gallons of seawater into a hole in the desert, that salt water will leach into the ground, poisoning the freshwater aquifers for miles around. It would be an ecological catastrophe. So this basin cannot just be a hole. It has to be a bathtub. The entire floor and walls of the port, millions of square meters, would need to be lined with heavy-duty industrial waterproof membranes and concrete. It would effectively be the world's largest swimming pool. And finally, the pumps. Water doesn't just flow uphill into the desert. To maintain the water level against evaporation in the scorching 110 degree heat, and to ensure fresh circulation so the port doesn't become a stagnant salt swamp, massive gigawatt-class pumping stations would be needed to cycle the water. The scale is biblical. It is Moses parting the Red Sea, but in reverse. They are bringing the sea to the Promised Land. But let's say you build it. Let's say you spend the billions and dig the hole. You still have a problem. Your cargo is now stuck in the middle of a desert. 350 kilometers away from the population centers of Tel Aviv and Haifa. A port without a railway is just a parking lot. To make this work, Israel needs a land bridge. This is the Red Med Railway. Currently, moving goods from a lot to the center of the country means putting them on trucks and driving them on a two-lane highway for four hours. It's slow, expensive, and dangerous. The Red Med Project proposes a double-track, high-speed railway that would act as a steel conveyor belt. The specs are impressive. Passenger trains would run at 250 to 300 kilometers per hour, cutting the travel time from Tel Aviv to Elat to just two hours. But the real money is in the freight trains. However, the negative desert is not flat. It is a rugged landscape of craters, limestone ridges, and deep wadis, or canyons. To build a railway here that is flat enough for heavy freight, you cannot just lay track on the sand. The current design calls for 63 massive bridges, spanning a total of 4.5 kilometers, and five tunnels, totaling 9.5 kilometers. They would have to bore through the Demona Ridge and bridge over the Zin Valley. It is an engineering challenge comparable to the Swiss Alps tunnels, but in a roasting desert. The logic is simple. A ship from China docks in the desert port. Robots unload the container. It's placed on a train. Two hours later, it's in Ashdod, on the Mediterranean, being loaded onto a ship for France. Total time crossing Israel, roughly 8 to 12 hours. Total time crossing the Suez, 12 to 16 hours plus the waiting time, plus the risk of blockage. It is the ultimate insurance policy. If the Suez closes, the trains keep running. It sounds like the perfect plan, a triumph of human ingenuity. So why, in 2025, is the Arava Valley still empty? Why hasn't a single shovel hit the ground? Because grand structures don't exist in a vacuum. They exist in the real world. And in the real world, this project faces three deadly enemies. Enemy number one, the environment. The Gulf of Aqaba is home to a natural wonder, the northernmost coral reef system in the world. These reefs are unique. They are super corals, genetically resilient to high temperatures. As climate change kills reefs globally, Eilat's corals might be the last one standing. 
they are a planetary treasure. Environmentalists argue that digging a massive canal and operating a mega port would release plumes of silt, dust, and industrial runoff. In the enclosed calm waters of the Gulf, this pollution wouldn't wash away. It would settle on the reefs, choking them to death. The slogan of the opposition is simple. You can't drain the sea and keep it blue. Destroying a global treasure to build a parking lot is a price many Israelis are not willing to pay. Enemy number two, the neighbors. Egypt watches this project with cold fury. The Suez Canal is the beating heart of the Egyptian economy, generating over $9 billion a year. It is a matter of national survival for Cairo. If Egypt builds a functional alternative, even if it only takes 10% of the traffic, it would cost Egypt hundreds of millions of dollars. Egypt views the Red Med Railway not as a business competitor, but as a strategic threat. Israel has to weigh the economic gain of the port against the diplomatic cost of enraging its most important peace partner in the region. Enemy number three, the cost. Finally, the math is brutal. The railway alone is estimated at eight to $10 billion. The port and canal, another 10 to $12 billion. That is a $20 billion price tag. And here is the dirty secret of logistics, double handling. Unloading a ship, putting the box on a train, railing it, taking it off, and putting it on another ship is always more expensive than just keeping the box on the ship and paying the Suez toll. Unless the Suez is closed, the Red Med route might actually be more expensive for everyday goods. It's a $20 billion backup generator, great to have in an emergency, but ruinously expensive to run every day. The Southern Gateway is one of those projects that refuses to die. Every time there is a war, every time a ship gets stuck in the Suez, the plans are dusted off. Politicians give speeches about independence and steel spines. And then the furler fades and the desert remains silent. As of today, the project is officially under review, trapped in a limbo of bureaucracy and budget fights. But the dream is powerful. It is the dream of a nation that wants to rewrite its own geography, a nation that refuses to be an island. If they ever build it, it will be an engineering marvel to rival the Panama Canal. It will be a testament to pure brute force, the will to carve a future out of rock and sand. But until the excavators start their engines, the Southern Gateway remains the most ambitious, expensive, and controversial grand structure that doesn't exist. What do you think? Is the security of a land bridge worth the environmental destruction of the coral reefs, or should Israel accept its geography and focus somewhere else? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to explore more projects that push the limits of what is possible, check out our video on the Thailand Bridge, another massive project trying to kill a major shipping strait. I'll see you there.